Hey, good morning, everybody. Trust everybody's having a good Thursday. Yeah. Something in my eye there. Went blind momentarily, but we're good now. I uh, want to jump right into today's devotion. won't be with you long, but two different things I want to look at uh, based on uh, Brother TJ's message on Sunday. I enjoyed the message and the testimony and the boldness, the stand, uh, but both. Um, but it, it was very good. So uh, we're talking about anxiety and the battle of the mind. Um, and as we uh, continue into this series, there's just there's so much in here to um, unpack. And and so in, entitled today, Attitude of Gratitude. Um, and and so when we look at it, we think of what is gratitude. Um, because I think this was two points, uh, point four and five, I believe, uh, of the message there, um, when he was talking about gratitude. And First Thessalonians 5 and 16 says this, Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Um, and I just think about what a uh, lifestyle that, that this is and it's it's not it goes against our nature it goes against society uh and what they feed into us if you're one that watches tv or have any kind of social media or you know basically interaction with people in general um most people by nature are pretty negative um you know news everything that you hear of in in the world today is not necessarily um encouraging um, and, and so we need to go to God's word and, and find out what does, you know, what does he say? We'll rejoice evermore. Um, not just when things are going good, not just when the music set just right, uh, the lights are dim, um, uh, you know, all your ducks are in a row, whatever it might be. It says rejoice evermore. Then it says pray without ceasing. And I love the fact of the, um, and this was the other thing that kind of hit me, um, Later, after the service, was thinking about it as the day went on. And, of course, the bell of hay that uh, Pastor was using and talking about casting our cares on him and talking about when he uh, used to help um, his papa do hay and stuff. And, of course, have done my share of hay and uh, still do my share of hay today for horses and cows and this, that, and the other. But one thing I was thinking about, if you know the mechanics of how a beller works, as that big bell uh, that he had on uh, the stage up there was put together, uh, there's a big wheel on a beller, and it has two tines or a fork, and as the hay comes in through our conveyor, then it, it presses it, and then it'll go back around, and it'll press it, and it'll keep pressing and pressing and pressing until you get a three, four-foot bell that, you know, weighs 50 pounds. Um and I think about that a lot of times in our prayer life, that's it, that we will do it our way. We'll continue to try to strive and do things the way we think they should be done. Um, and then once we hit rock bottom, then we just unload on God and give him, you know, all this stuff. And we, you know, obviously that's casting our cares upon him. But I thought of another way uh, of casting our cares upon him, as Pastor was talking about as well, Um and it's just the same way that that hay is put together. If you if you cut those strings, that hay is going to come together. If it's good hay, it'll come together in about four foot four inch, um, you know, pats of hay. And that's how we feed the horses when we cut it. Each one of them get a pat of hay. Um, and, and with that, <clears throat> I thought about how it is that you know we should be in our prayer. You know, it says pray without ceasing. Uh, that means every day, and and I've shared it before, but um, the poem that my grandmother gave me, and it's in one of my old Bibles, my childhood Bible that I had when I was little, but she gave it to me out of her Bible one day, and I've kept it ever since then, but it's a poem, and it says, pray without ceasing. God hears what you say from the moment you rise till the close of the day. Don't think for a moment he turns a deaf ear, trust and have faith, and he'll always be near. Um, and I think about it when we're looking at the, our mindset, um, 
you know, and, and we do that a lot in our relationships. I know me and my wife, uh, over the years in our marriage, you know, we would just hold things in to avoid fighting or arguing or whatever it might be uh, over a long period of time and not communicate like we need to. Um, and then we would have these, you know, kind of like blow ups, if you will, or whatever else, you know, then we would, you know, we things would just kind of like come to a head and, you know, um, and, and we've learned over the years that it's best for us to communicate, um, to keep, you know, to re have that release. And the same thing is with us, with our relationship with the Lord, you know, we need to every single day, um, communicate and, and give it to him, give it to him throughout the day, the little things, the big things. Uh, there's nothing too big for God, but there's also nothing too small for God. Give him your cares. It says, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And then Colossians 1.12, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet. Uh, in other words, he's made us fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Um, you know, it's through him that, that we're able to, you know, um, be partakers of this inheritance. Um that that Christ is, you know, we're heirs and joint heirs uh, with Christ, and so we should thank God to that every single day. Um, that this isn't home, that the trials and tribulations of this world are not going to last forever, um, but that you know we have a better inheritance that's coming our way, and it's not of this earth. And then finally, the positive mindset, which was the last point. Um, Philippians 4, 8 says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Um, and I think what better guide for us to have a positive mindset, you know, number one, the truth. Stick to what's true. Find what's true. Things that are a people's opinion, you know, um, I'm, I'm not a big fan of people's opinions. Um, I, I don't mean that in a bad way, um, but a lot of faith in, in people's opinions. Um, you know, I, I want some concrete evidence. I want to know that there's some stability in what people say. And I, I want to know that, you know, um, what people say they're it's, it's rooted, it's rooted in something that's going to last. Um, and so, you know, so many times we hear what, well, I think that, okay, well, that's good. But what, what's their background in thinking that, you know, I could tell you, I think what's wrong with your car, but I'm not a mechanic. So I, I please don't take that to the bank. Um, you may be pushing your car or walking. So, but whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, Okay, uh, whatever things are just and pure, lovely, things of good report, things that have virtue to them, okay, um, and anything of praise, think on these things. And so best way to have a positive mindset is to dwell on those things. So I uh, didn't mean to be so long. Hope you got something out of this. We love you guys. Have a great day.